Hail and welcome to The Heathen and the Witch, an intentional podcast about inclusive Norse paganism and witchcraft. Join us and listen to our stories about the ways in which the divine move through our modern daily lives. We're your hosts, Raven and Owl. Listen in wherever and however you are as we create sacred space, tell stories, and build a connection between us and the divine. Hail Thor, bringer of storms, protector of home and hearth, we invite you to join us today. We ask that you cleanse the space and bring your wisdom to us. We ask that you bless us as we speak and share through the storms of life. And so it is. first episode official episode of the heathen and the witch podcast i'm owl and this is raven and today we're going to be discussing altars and shrines and how they look like to both of us i guess Mm -hmm. what they look like to us and like the differences that we experience so owl how's summer treating you so far Um, it's really hot. No bueno. Looks like it's about to rain outside. Hey, same here. Tomorrow my kindred has their first open float, which is really exciting. We haven't done that since the pandemic, the before times. And we have like about 40 people, 30 to 40 people coming. So it's going to be huge. There's going to be a lot of drinking and a lot of hailing and, um, I'm prepared. I'm not sure my liver is though. Um, so... (laughs) interviewed for a possible new job today so we'll see which is super goes. exciting that's so exciting. super exciting might be paid a fair wage um yeah i don't know what that's like <laughs> do do any of us at this point uh no no unless you're like a millionaire but i don't think anyway i think most pagans are not like millionaires that that's just like a conjecture but like it's hard <laughs> to be like a millionaire and like also a pagan um how's uh how's life treating you actually really well um i just got promoted at work which is really really cool Hell yeah um i work with kids i'm officially a assistant director now which yeah. is pretty Spicy. exciting yeah i got a pay raise too which is super nice and then they were actually talking to me about possibly becoming salaried down the road you know which would be pretty i've never had a salary job before so (laughs) yeah even my hourly job was like it was like you have to work 40 hours a week and you're gonna get paid this much but like it's not salaried which made no sense (laughs) yeah exactly so the fact that they even mentioned that to me i was like what Um, but i really like it i really i'm learning a lot i've only been in the position for about a week now and uh, I feel like I'm learning a lot, which is really cool. I like seeing the behind the scenes. I get to work with parents now, too, which is pretty cool. I like talking to kids' parents about their progress. Ew. Ready? <laughs> <laughs> I write a lot of reports as well about student progress that their parents get in an email. So I'm learning how to professionally write, which is kind of a learning curve because typically all I do is creative write. So it's much different writing as an administrator. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Um, And then actually when this episode airs, it airs the week of my birthday, which is wild to me that it's already here. Happy birthday. Early birthday. Well, it will be like your birthday. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) So that's exciting. Like I have plans to go to the Renaissance Festival for my birthday. Um, Something my husband and I do every year. I just kind of drag him. No, summer's good. It's very hot, like it is out by you. We're in monsoon season, so we're getting a lot of afternoon rain. Wildfire yeah. season is picking up. Wow. Gotta love that. It really be wild out there. It is wild <laughs> out here. 
Meanwhile, <laughs> it's so green in Maryland right now. Like my garden is just bursting out of the like the garden beds and it's oh my god, I got chamomile this year. I am so excited. It started blooming. And like last time I tried chamomile, I got like all these tiny little bugs all over them and it, I couldn't use it cause like the fucking, it, it was like bugs everywhere and Oof. I'm not drinking bugs and I don't know how yeah, to no. clean it off. So like this time it's huge. It has, it's just massive and I'm going to get so many flowers and I've already gotten cute little chamomile flowers and I'm so excited. I don't that know. That is meant awesome. To look- that See is if awesome. I can harvest them. Yeah. And then we got like three pounds of green beans and a buttload of zucchini and we're getting tomatoes in and lettuce out the ass. So much lettuce. And so many hopefully salads. Hopefully our corn will come in too. I don't know. We'll see. That's exciting. We got the little, little shoots like poking out. That's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. That's really exciting. I'm happy for you. I'm excited. Where I'm at, it is so dry except for monsoon season coming in, that the grass is brown. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I've been going to the pool a lot, so that makes up for it. I haven't yeah. gone to the pool yet. That's actually what my boyfriend's doing right now. He's opening his parents' pool. So Nice. Go I go that. as often as I can. Like last year, I only went once, and it was like the week they closed it because I don't know why. I think part of it was we had really bad smoke. And so I didn't mm. want to be outside, but the smoke's not bad right now. So I've been going at least three times a week. It's fun to just swim. How's the, uh, you know, near the spiritual practice going? You know, it's pretty good. Um, I haven't made any candles recently. I've been, <sighs> as you all know, with the Supreme Court and all of that, my energy has been kind of whack. So I've been very careful about what I do right now. Um, yeah. I think energy's just been whack in general, but it's been good. My sister actually made me a fertility jar, um, a fertility spell jar that I put on my altar, which was really nice That's of cute. her because we're still trying for, you know, pregnancy. Um, I bought some new candles for Loki and Segan. They seemed really pleased with those. So, yeah. That was good. Target. That's fun. Yeah. I always stop in the Target candle aisle and I'm always like, okay, Loki, I have too many candles. I don't need to get any more. And then there's always that one candle that it's like, okay, but I have to get that one. Do you experience (laughs) that? You like go to the candle aisle and you're like, no, I'm not going to get any today. And then you find that one that you're like, oh, that's a Loki candle. I have to get that. (laughs) Um, I've been running it in just because he has too many candles. So I've been like switching them out. (laughs) He has like a giant like woodwick candle that I bought him specially for him because I couldn't find like the cinnamon scented one at the the Cracker Barrel near me. So, um, yeah, he he's still working on that one. Yeah, <laughs> um, I went to Target and I found these ones like a fern and like one I forget what the other one is, but I was like, oh, these will be perfect for my altar on Loki and Segan's side and. Uh, I feel like he's been pretty happy about that. What else have I been doing with my practice? Not a whole, you know, not a whole ton out of the ordinary. How about you? Well, the extent of it is like I'm getting really whack dreams lately. And I, oh, uh, yeah. It's like I'm getting all these like tarot cards that are like, there's a big change coming. And I'm like, where? And, <laughs> And it's like all these things that you've been worried about will come to an end. And I'm like, I don't know if that's the case. It's literally like, I mean, it might just be this job, but then I pulled tarot about this job too. And it was like, it wasn't like super positive, but it wasn't like super negative either. I don't know. Don't you hate that? Like that's part of, I haven't, I touched my cards. I think it was last week to do like a reading about pregnancy. And basically all I got was like a shrug. Like yeah, like okay. thanks. Thanks. I'm not getting much of a shrug. More, it's like the same message over and over again. Like movement, like things are going on, and I have to be patient. And I'm just like taking guesses. Like, like I had some intuitive thing that like 
I felt like Loki wanted me to stay at my job that I hate and like maybe to see because I just unionized my store and like I don't know. Maybe it's he frustrating. just wants to go there. Yeah. It's frustrating. Like I don't I don't know what he wants. It's- like I, I did it. I did the thing. Like it's literally not my responsibility to see it through. Like other people are fully capable of doing what I'm doing. I'm not special. The thing I keep I hearing and this is I've stopped writing it down because it's like the same thing every single time, but it's like, be patient, be patient. And like, I'm so tired of being patient for things to like work out. Like, like I trust him, but like, but also it's like, is this job like the thing that I was supposed to be patient for? Like, and there's no way else to know that unless I go and actually do it rather than be like, Oh, but what if, and like, that's kind of like how my life is anyway. Like I'm always, that's why I haven't even left the job yet. Like I've had multiple reasons to leave and then I'm like, but, and then, and I like the people at my work and stuff. It's just like, it's like <sighs> corporate, man. I don't want to do it anymore. And I just hate power imbalances. <laughs> like I can't unsee it. I just can't. So, um, I'm sure that would ever ends up working out because weren't we just talking about this earlier today how you like basically manifested this new job opportunity well yeah i was like i need money (laughs) please give me money and like they're paying me like two 250 more than an hour than i'm being paid at my current job and that's money and also like i can probably work a lot longer because it's a chiller job too so like i can probably work more hours and the reason i pulled back on my hours at my old place was because like it's so fucking tiring mm-hmm. so yeah and it's always busy but this place is busy it's just like i'm not like i'm not dying you know i don't think i'll die and i think i might be doing administrative work too so who knows i don't know it's worth a try and hopefully they like me so We'll go for it. <laughs> you know what I found myself thinking about today in the car? Mm. Uh, Spirituality-wise and just how things are. It feels like we're in like a Ragnarok cycle. Do you feel that? Or is that just me? Mm, like, there's so I would say so. Yeah. There's like, as I was thinking about on my way home, I was like, everything feels like it's an upheaval. And like my personal life is finally settling out. But it feels like everything going on around me and everyone around me is, like, complete upheaval. I don't know. Like, maybe it's just me who's, like, in current. I've been in upheaval since the beginning of this year. I don't know. I just feel like everything's kind of on this, like, ledge. And one time it's just going to fall over. And then we're just going to see it explode everywhere. And... That just feels like Loki in a nutshell, just because he always is, like, the one who, like, pulls the straw off the camel's back and, like, it collapses. You can't have change unless chaos comes with it. Because that's the only way that change happens. Change never happens, like, nice and easy. It always feels violent to me when change happens. It's always abrupt and violent. (laughs) (laughs) True. It... And, like, part of me is just scared that, like, people are going to just stop being mad and we're going to go back to regular programming. Mm-hmm. I, th- I feel like that's what happens. Like, that's what happens with the Black Lives Matter movement. Like, it happened with, um, like, Trump when he became president. Like, it just – I don't want to get too into all of it because it's so depressing. I'm really scared that – people will start being passive again and we're just going to crumble and we're next. Like I feel not like we aren't already next as women or like at least, you know, like female people. Yeah. Yeah. But like religion too. Oh yeah. They're already passing. They're, they're thinning the line between church and state. It just, it's very frightening where things are right now. Yes. So yeah, maybe some good change can come out of this, though. I was watching a TikTok that said that, like, two of the justice, no, at least three of the justices are, like, already really, really old. And then one of them is retiring, it looks like, and is being replaced with someone good. I don't remember. I was like, oh, wow. And then I didn't go and Google it to double check that. 
what's going on. But also, why are we having like supreme overlords telling us what to do? Like they're not even voted in. Why do we have this system? Can we can we just not? I think this entire system needs to crumble. <laughs> like, let's be I real. Agree. I agree. Like we need to rethink how things are done here in America. But maybe this is that time for it. You know, we're in a Ragnarok cycle. Maybe maybe something good will come out of this. Don't stop fighting. So that was your politics for today. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's really hard to separate politics from our spirituality just because like sovereignty and like bodily autonomy is really important in my practice at least. Especially yep, with Loki Freya. Um, Freya especially like I haven't even even heard from her but I I feel like she's just stomping back and forth like what the fuck (laughs) yep (laughs) yeah (laughs) that's the feeling I'm getting as well she seems busy and I'm sure she's busy um Loki's also been kind of busy too he has I've noticed that too like last night I think was the first time I actually like seen him in quite a while like wow where have you been (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. He looked tired, <laughs> honestly. He does look tired. He looks like, tired. I asked him, like, hey, are you okay? And he's like, uh, I'm fine. Like, Yeah, pretty. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't, he, normally, he's really, really chatty, and he's not yeah. been chatty. At least like, I end. sense his presence, but he doesn't, like, talk. Like, yeah, exactly. It's yeah, weird, because I'm so used to having a running dialogue with him. <laughs> and, like, yeah. It's just been quiet for like two weeks. Oh, yeah. Two weeks like, for me, too, honestly. Yeah. It's like I can tell that he's there. I can feel him poking at me periodically, but like, yeah. I'm getting nothing. Yeah. This is not the time he's free to do whatever he wants. I'm just like, I need guidance. But not that he would guide me anyway. He's more like, make your own choices. But it's like, I feel like I've been in this liminal space for. Way too fucking long, just not making choices and not moving forward on much. And like, I, I don't know. We'll see. It's a lot. There's a lot going on right now. Yeah. Um, so I guess I was going to talk about like the difference between a shrine and an altar because that. That isn't really, like, divided often in pagan spaces. They'll just call it either, like, an altar or... or Yeah, because you were telling me about this, and I honestly had, like, no idea. I had never really thought about it. Yeah. You know, what I have is an altar. In polytheistic cultures in general, they mostly have shrines. Like, Like, so I think of Shinto, where they have a shrine for the different entities and, like, ancestors and uh i mean that's even anywhere like you'll go to mexico or latin american countries during the day of the dead and they have shrines to their ancestors basically like an altar is where you do things like there's a purpose in the thing that you're doing so like an altar would be where you actively do workings so you can make offerings there you can do witchcraft. Like, it suits a working purpose. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, not that shrines can't either. Like, all of my shrines that I have for different deities could be called altars as well because I do actively make offerings there. However, they are shrines for the most part because most of the time they go untouched. And if I make an offering, it's more of a – I usually don't do it there. But I have them because I think of shrines more like a door for the like the divine or for spirits to walk through. It's their space, basically. It's no one else's. I don't touch them unless I'm going to dust them off or clean them. And they are simply just allowing the spirit to have a home within your home or wherever you practice. Mm -hmm. Um, They aren't moved often. I mean, they can be. Like, you can have a portable shrine. You can move it wherever. Like, you can make it in any space. Most of the time, like, if you have this space, you can, they usually just don't move. 
unless you have a better place to put them or something. And you don't touch whatever's on it. You don't really take things off unless you get permission. Like it, it's like when you go into someone's house and you take something, like you're not going to do that without like asking them first. Yeah, um, exactly. Cause that's just rude. Yeah, exactly. So I think that's a good way to describe it. I like the idea of them being like the doorway for the spirits. It's nice to be able to make room in your home for the gods and the spirits. And by having that launch point, they feel like it's their home too. Like I'll use an example. Loki, (laughs) he has two shrines in my house. (laughs) One is in the kitchen and on my kitchen table where he can be witness to me cooking or he can just receive offerings more easily because... It's in the kitchen and I just have to walk two feet to put it on his little shrine. I'll also like light a candle there if I'm like, hey, you want to come visit or hang out? Like he doesn't need it all the time. But sometimes it's nice to have like the intention of going to light the candle. It's like a beacon. I always think of it like he just sees the beacon a lot easier and he can walk over from wherever he is. (laughs) It's like a lighthouse, right? Like, hey, come this way. Um. But versus like, and also when I bought my house, I, I made the intention that this was also like Loki's home. I like did a whole ritual kind of to greet him. And in other polytheistic cultures, they do a similar thing and they install the deity into the shrine. Like they will do songs or like, you know, different ritualistic aspects where they ask the deity to come into the space, like where their like figure and imagery is, and they will like be part of it. And so I kind of did that. And I don't know, I honestly don't know why I did it because I didn't think about it. <laughs> it was like an recently. instinctive thing. Yeah. Like I wrote a whole poem and stuff for him and I like asked him to live here. And in my UPG, I feel like he's like a hearth deity anyway. So he just kind of inhabits my space. And I mean, he's like a roommate, so he can come and go as he pleases. Um, Like he's not here all the time. He's not like, he's not permanently here. That's not the point. It's just like, this is a really good touch point for him to go. I think that's important. It's a grounding point. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, Sorry, one more thing. And I think (laughs) someone in my kindred, I don't remember who, um, they said something that was, like, really interesting. They said, like, like, I wonder if the gods have shrines for us. Oh, weird. I never thought about that. Like, I wonder, and in my weird experiences, I have had them. Like, they have spaces for me to be in, like, go to like loki has intentionally built spaces for me on the astral he's on that so like, you too. can come here yeah yeah like a house. not that i always do but it's easier for me to imagine it yeah yeah exactly yeah he did that for me as well i never thought about that being kind of like a shrine though that's interesting but it is because that's it where is. you go because that's where you go that's your touch point i think shrines should be talked about a lot more because i think they're fucking awesome Um, I have a whole room dedicated to mine. I have each, I'm really spoiled. I'm going to say that up front. Um, I'm really grateful for having the room that I do. (laughs) I didn't imagine ever being like this. I went from having like a little corner on my desk that just had a collection of shit. And now I have like really fucking gorgeous like shrines of each deity that I work with and are considered part of my quote-unquote hearth cult, which would be, like, the deities I work with most often. And if I had, I, I've most recently added Freya. She did not have an, a shrine there originally. She does now. And then I also have an outdoor shrine uh, where I dump all my offerings. In heathenry, we call it a ve, V-E with a little, like, accent over it, a ve. Usually, we pour offerings on it. It's usually, like, a pile of rocks. <laughs> and... Because also it's not good to dump alcohol directly onto the ground anyway. So we dump it over rocks whenever we're done ritual and the land receives it. And because the land receives it, we believe it goes to the gods. So that's what I have in my backyard for 
whenever I have libations or sometimes food offerings. Like I love to, I love Loki's scrambled eggs over there. Um, some squirrel enjoyed it and then <laughs> thus it was received. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Yeah. See, I'm kind yeah. of the opposite. I don't have space. Like I have very, very little space. I've been wanting to do a shrine for my ancestors and like try to figure out a good space for that, but I still haven't navigated my space well enough to put one in. Mm-hmm. It's on the to-do list. I just need to figure out my space better. Um, yeah. Cause otherwise I don't have shrines. Um, I have an altar um, with parts dedicated to deities where I give offerings and stuff, but also where I do all of my witchy working things. Like what do you, what, what do you put on it? Well, okay. So it's on top of my dresser um, because that's the only space I have for it. It's the only space I've ever had for it. So when I started, um, like even before I started witchcraft, I would collect little knickknacks and stuff and like put them on my dresser as like my quiet space. And I would just Mm -hmm. like sit in front of my dresser when I needed to ground. Um, And then it kind of became a lot more intentional once I started my witchcraft um, learnings. And it it initially wasn't dedicated to any deity. It was just where I did just my working. So my candle magic, I would, um, you know, burn candles, uh, sit in front of it, do tarot on the floor, which I still do. Um, But now, since I work so much with Segan and with Loki, I wanted a place for them to be able to land. And the only space I have is my altar. So it's actually divided into thirds. So the left half is for Segan. And it's also where I keep my incense and my moon water. Um, And it's got little knickknacks for her. So I've got some prayer beads that I got from Owl. Uh, I've got some shells that I collected. A candle that I made for her at the run fair last year, which is really cool. And then some candles that made me think of her. On the right side, it's for Loki. And it's also where I keep my lighter. And I do keep some salt over there. Um, And it's just some candles. It's a bunch of little, like, marvely knickknacks that I've picked up over time. Mm -hmm. And then I also have a really nice candle holder that I'll do offering candles in. I've got some jewelry that reminds me of Loki, some beads. And then in the middle, the dead middle, is where I do all my work. So on the middle of my altar, I have a vase and flowers. I use fake flowers. Um, I change them with the season. I change my tapers and my flowers with the season. So right now, since we're in summer, I'm actually using my wedding bouquet. Aww. Uh, yeah, because that's those are my summer flowers. Um, yeah, because I got married in the spring. So, uh, and I have all of I have my taper candles that I light when I do ritual or I light when I'm doing my candle magic. I have Loki's name and runes on it. Uh, I have a stone for the Fae. It's one of those. I forget what what are those called again? When it has oh, the hole hag going stone. Out. Yeah, I have a hagstone that I found when I was a kid. Uh, a card with a raven on it, because I am raven. And then I just put, like, all of my burning candles that have my intent in the middle of my altar. Um, yeah. Then when I make offerings for, like, Loki or Segan, I put them on the respective sides. So, like, if I have food for Loki or I want to do a candle for Loki, it goes on the bright side. Um, Segan doesn't often get food, but she gets flowers. So those will go on the left side. Uh, or if I want to do a candle for her, her candle goes on the left side. And that's how I make my space work for me. Well, and then for any other witchcraft thing that I want to do or spiritual thing I want to do, I sit in front of the altar when oh, yeah. I do those things. So like my spinning stuff is all next to my altar um, when I read tarot, I sit in front of my dresser and I do it on the floor. It's all very connected for me. Yeah, the most meaningful thing that, like you can do, honestly. Like, it doesn't have to be super fancy. But... No, it's very straightforward. You know, the cloth I used is like a four dollar piece of fabric I got from Walmart. 
Yeah. Uh, the candles, I just pick them up at Target. It's all stuff I just find. If you experience this owl, but mm. one of the cool things about my working altar and how it's lighted and stuff, if I go over and I run my hands above it, I can actually feel the energy coming out of it. Wait, where? On my altar. Like, if you go oh. to my altar and you run your hands, like, six inches above it, you can feel the energy that radiates off of it at this point. Yeah. Um, it depends. Well, all of my shrines kind of, like, the entire room just kind of has a vibe. Mm-hmm. Um, I, like, painted, like, sigils into the walls to protect it, and then I, like, do the majority of my meditation and prayer in it. Uh, sometimes I don't really have the spoons to walk upstairs because it's all the way upstairs. Um, and it's also like really dark. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, and sometimes I even just sit up there and fuck around. Um, but yeah, like the entire energy is kind of different from the rest of my house. It's also the cleanest room <laughs> that I have in my house. <laughs> Everywhere else is, like, not great right now. But I vacuumed my shrine room and dusted it and cleaned the carpets. And um, it's it's pretty sterile. <laughs> I mean, not sterile in the way that, like, there's nothing in it. It's just, like, I... You cleanse it regularly. Yeah. And you clean at it least regularly. A couple times a week, I'll, like, um, smoke cleanse it. Um, that's how my altar is too honestly if you go in my room everything is a disaster because I am as my husband put it a trash panda Yeah, um, same. but if you look at my altar my altar is actually organized and it's neat and I clean it off maybe like once a week you know mm-hmm. unless Loki throws a fit about the food in which case I'll leave it an extra week it hits a point where he argues with me and then I'm just like, you know what? I'm going to have bugs at this rate. Like it's got to go. And at that <laughs> point I'll just clean indiscriminately. Yeah. Yeah. He. I don't think he understands tr- that concept. I don't, I think he does. I just don't know if he cares. <laughs> like, okay. That's fair. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> like, he, uh, I feel like this, this, he just walks around with like sticks in his hair. Like, He's actively dirty. I don't think he cares about bugs. He's like, they're not hurting anything. <laughs> well, I care about them. So. Yeah. I mean, I, I just don't think he cares. <laughs> yeah. But arguably my altar is like the cleanest part of my, my room. I think uh, when you put a lot of energy into stuff like your shrine room where the gods are or like my altar. I think that's why it radiates energy is because mm-hmm. you put so much into it and it like builds it's kind of a theory I had about my altar like years ago was that the reason it had so much energy was because I put so much of myself into it when I was creating it. Some time ago, maybe like at least six months ago or so, I was like almost at the point where I was beginning to wonder if maybe my room was too much because it stopped holding meaning to me, I guess. Mm. And like, it's all fancy. Like, I decorated the room specifically to be my shrine room. I, mean, I do other things in it. Like, I sew and I, I, like, do yoga in it. Most of the stuff I sew is from my Etsy store, which is mostly dedicated to the gods anyway, so it didn't feel t- terribly, like, out of to- off topic. And then yoga is also a spiritual practice for me, too. I was beginning to think that maybe it was just too much, and that's why it stopped having meaning, but... I also stopped going in there. Meaning is what you make of it, right? Yeah, exactly. And I was also at a weird plateau in my practice, too. So it's important to me now because I stopped feeling like I had to do certain things. It was when I realized why I wanted to do certain things. And I want to be up there and having like a sacred like experience, even if it's just literally I don't feel anything. Sometimes I don't feel anything, but I'm up there anyway. And, like, I still light the candle and I still, like, set aside time. And sometimes I don't even talk. I just kind of sit there silently 
without my phone, kind of just sit there. And then one day I'm going to have like a music box in there because my boyfriend's game room is like right across the hall from it. (laughs) He's so (laughs) loud. But usually that doesn't bug me just because I have my headphones in. I do a similar thing too, though, like how you go and you just like light the candles and sit in there sometimes, even if you don't feel like it. Um, yeah, I, I do something similar because my altar is in my bedroom and I can see it throughout my bedroom because my room's kind of small. Um, at night, when I need to kind of recenter myself, I'll light everybody's candles on the altar. I'll write all of the candles. And I'll just sit there and either journal or I'll spin because I find I find a lot of meditation with my crafting. Um, and it's just that mm-hmm. little bit, even if I'm not talking to anyone actively, even if I'm not hearing anyone actively, it's the act of just being and it grounds me and reconnects me. I have like certain yoga positions that I'll do. Um, that I feel are grounding. And I think that's the most still I'm ever when I'm trying to meditate because otherwise I'm just either rocking back and forth like a lunatic or um, sometimes I dance. That's been interesting. I also like to smoke in my room too. <laughs> like <laughs> Not like smoke, smoke, but I'll like have my vape up there and it kind of helps with the, with me just centering down and, just getting like calm and letting go of the day. Um, I don't recommend always using drugs, but I'm ADHD. So unfortunately, sometimes that's what it means. Yeah. <laughs> like, especially Every- right now. Everything is different for everyone. You got to do what's right for you. Yeah. Don't let anyone be like, let someone be like, don't always rely on drugs. And I don't, but like there's periods in time with my ADHD where I literally just can't think straight and I need it if I want to maintain my practice in there. So. Which I think is just fair. Is. I mean, again, you have to do what's right for you. And if something works for you, then other people shouldn't be judging you for that. Yeah. Well, I don't care what other people say anyway, but. <laughs> Which is good. <laughs> it's a good way to be. I think there's a level of comfort having a place where you can go to just be. talked about what's on my shrines yeah what is on your what are or <laughs> what do you have on your shrines <laughs> <laughs> so i have like a bookshelf or like a shelf shelf dedicated to deities that aren't loki and segan <laughs> like i have thor on there and he shares a shelf with odin because they're kind of like mostly in the background and then i have hell on one side and then freya on the other um, no one's really put up a fuss about who they share shelves with, except for Odin, who didn't want to be sharing a shelf with Hell. Uh, <laughs> understandable. So, oh, I, I think that's uh, fine. Yeah, understandable. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, it's their house. It's not mine. So Most deities don't seem to care as much, except for Loki. <laughs> Loki has an entire desk for himself, <laughs> and it's still <laughs> overflowing. Um, with He's so shit. spoiled. <laughs> He is like I have a um I have a scarf that I knit and I finished it the day we got married and I occasionally take it off if I want to use it and he he's not really big on me touching his things but sometimes he's like okay I'll let you have it this one time <laughs> oh <Aww>. um, <laughs> he also has like a fox pelt on there that I bought from an ethical source uh they get it from the side of the road i assure you i wear it sometimes especially at like the ren fair or i'm probably gonna wear it tomorrow for a ritual because it makes me feel connected to him and at the ren fair like expressing myself and i feel like he like you know likes that um but he's like don't get it dirty though (laughs) 
<laughs> and it's funny because like the That's time funny he said that, him. <laughs> yeah, like first of all from him, and then the second of all, like I ended up accidentally like dropping it on the dirt like three different times that day. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Like, he can't really complain. I mean, you're right. He walks around with sticks in his hair. Like, come on, dude. I don't think he was, like, totally complaining. But and then he has a bunch of trinkets. Like, he has jewelry on there. One time, I think he gave me a bracelet. It was just found on my desk at my old workplace. And it was around the time we got hitched. And I was like, is this anyone's? And, like, no one knew whose it was. Like, it didn't fit anyone's wrist. It fit mine, though. So that was weird. And that's on his altar. I can't wear it because I, I can't wear bracelets at work. And he has, like, a 20 questions game. Like, you know those little game, handheld games from, um, oh, yeah. oh, from yeah. the 90s? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Maybe early 2000s, not the 90s. But, like, you used to have, like, a bunch of, like, little handheld games for all, all you Gen Zers. Um, before apps, uh, and it's how we entertained ourselves in the old days. Yeah, <laughs> and it was like a really accurate twenty questions. Given that it was it fun. Update. I had one of yeah. those as a kid as well. Like as a teenager, I had one. He wanted it though. I was about to get rid of it because I thought the battery was dead, and I kept trying it, and like it wasn't working. And then he was like, "It's gonna work." And then like I put it on his altar, and like a couple days later, I like tried it again, and it worked. So that's amazing. <laughs> he was probably like, I, I want this. <laughs> <laughs> like, honestly, yeah. you can't, you can't make this stuff up. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure maybe like the battery just decided to come back, I guess. Cause that's how it works. Uh, he has like roses. Sometimes if I get roses, I'll give him one. And he has like, I have a lot of his artwork on the back of my wall next to it. And he has like a wall of Loki being Loki. Um, and then next to it is Segan's shrine, which has like a bowl and flowers, a vase for flowers. I'm not really good at changing it out though. So I tried only to give her flowers when I'm feeling less neurodivergent than usual. Cause otherwise I sit there and rot. Um, <laughs> yeah. There's a reason I do fake flowers on my altar. <laughs> yeah. I probably will do that. When I go to the grocery store, they're, like, right there. And I'm like, hey, what flowers do you want? And then she's like, that one. Or sometimes it's Loki speaking for Segan. Um, <laughs> like she that wants periodically. <laughs> like, okay. Is she AFK right now? Like, she can't talk for herself. And then... He's just trying to be a good, helpful husband. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, he was the one that informed me that he- she likes purple flowers. She didn't tell me herself. She wasn't really talking to me yet. But I was like, Okay. <laughs> Which is funny because before I started working with her, it popped in my head that she liked purple flowers and she hadn't told me that either. And I'm sure it was Loki popping it in my head. Like, she likes purple flowers. Hey, go get her. (laughs) Oh, and I have my ancestor altar, um, which has like pictures of my ancestors and it has some of my... um, dogs remains uh like fur both of my dogs have died from when i was a child recently so i had got vials of their fur and pictures and i have candles of other family dogs you can tell i have like a really big emphasis on dogs uh <laughs> not that i don't sometimes, love my other ancestors but sometimes dogs are better out. than people <laughs> <laughs> like i have pictures of my my grandparents and then my late friend and um and I, I only give water on that one because uh, I, I can't keep up with it. But I feel like that's the best offering anyway. And it's in this really cool cup, too. It has, like, fossils. It it was cool. Like, fossils in the cup. Um, like, it's made of, like, s- sediment. And then you have, like, little ancient bits of snail. And I thought that was cool because ancestors... Everyone else's shrine is not as cool as Loki's, unfortunately. I haven't really had the money to occupy everyone else's shrine. And they don't seem to care as much, I guess. Um, Loki's very particular about what goes on his. And then Freya was like, I want mine to be aesthetically pleasing. So she has like a rabbit pelt, also from an ethical source. And she has a vase of flowers that I, I... 
started to like pick off flowers for her like i have a rose bush outside my house and i'll put like a rose in there um she's a cool birch candle and ooh, i bet that's lovely when it burns i haven't burned it yet because i'm terrified it's like a really big candle i don't know Ugh. i don't know if i can burn it on the way that her shrine is right now but it is cool and aesthetically pleasing and that's what she wanted so i need to really yeah. like maneuver my space so i can get my ancestor altar figured out it's probably just going to be like a small candle and maybe yeah. a cloth nothing terribly yeah. fancy you don't need much um yeah pictures are always nice if you have them just because that's pretty traditional i don't really work with my ancestors much because they're really loud and obnoxious yeah i don't um, work with mine either they don't shut up just my clear senses go off the hook anytime i start working with the dead like i understand that they have opinions but i can't they're deal intense. with it they're, intense. they're really intense yeah yeah the dead are intense i get ones with accents and like one speaking italian and i don't speak italian i don't even know italian like if you'd ask me to like think of an italian like phrase or something i can't tell you like it just was going off in italian like i can't understand you can you slow down or speak english and then they get more angry in italian so I've had relatives come through, but I don't work with them. I just kind of relay messages as they come through, and that's about the extent of it. About all I can handle, truthfully, with the dead. Let's do the room pull and the card pull of the day. Do you want to go first? Yeah, I can go first. Um, I'll also say again, just like like we said in our introductory episode, uh, my interpretations are not going to be standardized. They're just kind of my interpretation. So uh, don't quote me on... <laughs> <laughs> on this please <laughs> if your intuition while you're listening says something else trust your intuition yeah i'll say what like they mean pretty like unilaterally but um the personal imp- interpretation is kind of like what i make of them and how i learn them so anyway um i drew yara or yara um it looks like two Kainaz is kind of like <laughs> pairing together, um, mirroring each other. And we were just talking about how the cycles are like being done. Like we're just kind of like reaping the benefits of our work from the past. And I feel like, oh my God, I also pulled this last time at my um, kindred's symbol. <laughs> nice. Nice. Well, it's kind of like a, one of the cyclical runes. I always see it as like reaping the benefits of, like it's like harvesting, I feel like. Yeah, what do you think it means for us going forward in the next month? Yeah, so I think there's going to be a lot of change. Um, just in general, I feel like things are picking up motion and we're heading into the next phase of the wheel of the year which is uh, Lunasod, right? Yeah. 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 Um, before then, I feel like there's some shit that's gonna go down. <laughs> it honestly I don't know does what. not surprise me. It doesn't surprise me. As we catapult through this year, that has been quite hellish uh, for multiple reasons. Yara, what are you gonna pull? <laughs> So, I'm using actually my favorite, my favorite, favorite tarot deck. It's Journey into the Hidden Realm. It's the first deck I ever got, and so I have a really good connection with it. It's the Fae, um, who I also have a connection with. So, and this Mm. is actually, I love this card in this particular deck. Um, It's a little boy holding a dragon egg. Hmm. Maybe not a dragon egg, but or like a phoenix egg, maybe, because phoenixes are a running theme in this deck. Um, and it always has like kind of a soft spot for me. So there's a lot of potential here, and it's a big responsibility. So whatever's going down in the next month, 
it's going to feel overwhelming to a degree. But once you realize that you don't have to carry it all by yourself or that it is part of you, a lot of it's part of you and not something separate from you, it makes it easier so that you can live your life and not have life live you. Yeah. So embrace what is within you. Embrace the change coming. Embrace the energy that you're feeling. You know, hold it close to you and use it to go forth and blossom. I think this is a really good time to just kind of, you know, recognize your own potential, recognize your own power and energy that you carry with you. Like the little boy carrying the egg close to him. You know, carry that energy with you close to you and know that it's part of you. Like you said something like, it is what you make of it. I feel like a lot of people are probably feeling really stressed right now about the Supreme Court's decision and the world that is changing by the second or re- reverting back to some mm-hmm. stupid, not real ideal. Um, the world what? is not on your shoulders. No. You know? It's not. Carry what you can. You know, don't let it wear you down. There's a lot of energy going around right now. Take what you need. Release what doesn't serve you. And like the card says, don't let life live you. You live your life. Like you have more control than you think you do. Because our deity of the the, week, the month, I guess, is mm-hmm. Thor, I wrote kind of like a little meditation on Thor. Take a moment and be still. Breathe deep. Get present to the world around you. Whether you're driving or sitting in an office or wherever you listen, feel the earth under your feet. Notice the air around you, what it feels like what it smells like. Notice the weight of your tongue on the bottom of your mouth. Notice the weight of your arms. Notice how your feet feel. Take a moment and think about what Thor means to you. If you don't know him, He is half Aesir and half Jotun. He is Odin's son. His hammer, Mjolnir, is worn by heathens and one of the few artifacts that we have remaining of religious jewelry from that time. It is believed that Thor hollows the space and for that reason Mjolnir is often used to cast ritual space in heathen tradition. However, Thor is also the protector of the common people. He was well known to farmers, to the people who get their hands dirty, the people who face elements more severely than those who live safely away from the world. The elements directly affect the common people, and it was Thor who brought the storms and the water that nourished their crops. These days, most of us no longer directly engage with farming, but we still engage with the elements, as some of us even have Some of us have less access to water. Some of us are in drought. Others have too much water as the seas rise and our homes are being flooded. We are the common people, those who cannot simply pick up and leave because we have not the means to. We are the common people as well, who work tirelessly with wages that do not compete with the rising prices of inflation. We are the common people rising up and crying out about a system that no longer serves us. The common people whose homes or livelihoods are destroyed. As those who are in power fight less meaningful battles and our voices fall on deaf ears. Hail to Thor, protector of the common people. Hail to Thor bringer of storms, destroyer of those who bring us danger. Hail to Thor, wielder of Mjolnir, protector of our homes and our welfares. (laughs) 
May our cries be heard. May the direction of these storms change. May he bless our spaces, our hearts, and keep us whole and hail together. Hail to Thor. Hail to Thor. Well, thank you so much for joining us today as we talked about altars. Um, Hopefully, you know, you're inspired to kind of create your own if you don't have one already. Um, Or even gather more meaning if you have one mm -hmm. and have more inspiration for what it means to you. Yep. Um, Al, where can people find you? I'm mostly focusing on my Etsy store lately, uh, Leaves of Yggdrasil Co., uh, Yggdrasil is Y-G-G-D-R-A-S-I-L Co. I'm on Etsy. I'm also on Instagram. And I'm on TikTok now. Uh, <laughs> against my better judgment. Um, <laughs> you make great videos, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing my best. All of it's the same. Le- leaves of Yggdrasil Co. I'm mostly writing on our podcast blog now i pretty much stopped my personal blog and you can find both of us on the heathen and the witch dot wordpress dot com is yeah. where we both are i also write on the blog here um alice posts are every friday mine are every wednesday you can also find other places to find our podcast you can find links to what raven does what do you do I actually spin yarn. Um, So I spin witchy yarn. I currently am selling on Etsy. I have some things I need to upload, some new listings. Uh, You can find my Etsy shop. It's Spirit Spun Yarns. I also have two Instagrams. So I have my store Instagram. And then I also have a personal Instagram if you want to get on and just look at knitting projects that I'm randomly doing. That's basically all I post on there, Um, which is Birdie the Knitter. Again, it's mostly knitting projects, but I like sharing what I'm working on. Right now, I'm working on a lace shawl for Segan, and I've got pictures of it posted. I actually wrote a blog post about it, so if you're curious, that's where you can go find it. I think that's all the places I am, and I'm happy to share. You can find me in other corners of the internet, but I don't update as much pretty much anywhere else mostly etsy Um, and instagram and our blog on our website thanks for joining us i hope you had a nice time we'll catch you again next month we're shooting for the second mondays of the month so keep an eye out for next month's monday um and we'll see you next time